message will be coming from referrals. So that is great. So any shout outs for anybody? Any shout outs? You want to thank somebody about something? Or... Okay, I'll start. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Keep going. Go ahead. Uh, she'll help us get involved in your files. She works really great with our title office, but what, what she really does is she's in front of the game. Yes. When things are going on, she gets us involved early. We're able to, to, to work on the files and make all you guys happy. Yeah, I so second that. She does That's a great job. Sarah with Pacific Coastline Escrow is amazing. Her and her team. I really enjoy working with her as well. I agree with you. And I would also want to, you know, give a shout out for a few people. Uh, Summer has been great, you know, uh, in the last few days. And always she's great, I, I got to say, you know. And a uh, shout out also for Mike Hardy, who's going to be speaking out today. And I love how he explains things. Believe me, I saw a lot of lenders speak out. And I've seen everything. But he always seems to impress me with what he presents. And Sarah, and I will also like to uh, shout out for Drake, hey. who is assisting me today. And I always enjoy our conversations together. <laughs> and Stefan for the interesting classes he gives. Okay, moving on. Let's look at July top sales volume for residential teams. Van Wigan Associates, the Veritas Group, Shannon Jones team, Dunn team, and Rita Canberian team. Great job for residential individual. Rodique Bello, Pat Casera, Hange Mabagi, Cindy Hinderberger, and Kendra Miller. And for the commercial, Doug Shia, Emma Story, Mark Beats, Cizri, and for a rising star, Isaac Osborne. Let's put hands for them. Great job, guys. For the 24 closings, as we notice, we have a ton of closings. I'm not going to go through all those names, but we had a lot for residentials, as we can see, and for the teams as well, and for commercial sides. And look at all these names that had closings here. Look at all that. These were all closings just the last week, by the way. But I want like four or five people to tell me what do you expect the total volume is? Give me a number in millions. 17. 17 million. Okay. Any other number? 17. <laughs> 17 million and one million one and one dollar by Mike Hardy. Will he take the prize today? <laughs> Anybody else want to give a number? 4.5 million. 12.5. Okay. Anybody else? 15.2. Last number. One more number. 16. So the number is 13 million point six three one. Great job. Maybe next week we should establish a prize that Holly would tell us what we should give the final. <laughs> yeah, great job. Okay, but that's a huge volume for uh, one week, guys. So you should be all very proud of yourselves. You know, we try uh, to give you the best uh, supports and encouragement to do your best. And you do your best. And you're the best. No listings. If anybody sees who's present here who sees their listing, please pitch it. We have one in uh, Long Beach, uh, and it's going for, just remove the screen here because I can't see it, 1275 Yeah. Yeah, because it's just in the way, yeah. And that was with Lyft distinct distinctively. Is Grace here or anybody of her team to pitch that? Okay. Uh, and then we have Lindsay Ascaria and Lindsay Lutsena for, uh, looks like a single family home. In Running Springs. Yeah. Yeah. I've never sold in Running Springs, but it looks good. $550,000. Allison Van Wig, as usually busy, another new listing. And it's a single family residence for $850,000, three bedrooms, two baths. And Julia Devar, single family residence, $950,000. You gotta be thinking of the buyers you're working with. Will this fit them or not? We can finish it in-house. 
another single family residence in Artesia for the Shannon Jones team, $895,000, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a condo in Long Beach, two bedrooms, two bathrooms for $555,000. And a single family residence in Los Angeles for $629,000. Four bedrooms and two baths. I love 629. 629 is first day I met my wife ever was June 29th. So I always love that number. So. <laughs> and in Acton, we have a single family residence that was built in 2008 for going for $599 for Josefa Alperin. And Lopes and Fair, we have a single family residence for 520000 in India. I'm here on Zoom if you want me to pitch it. Oh, please. Yeah, please do. Okay, so three bedroom, two bath in Indio, California. We're right across Coachella Fairgrounds, so the Empire Polo Grounds. Um, HOA is 300. It's a gated community called Indian Palms Country Club. There is golf, tennis, three community pools, and a gym, and it has been a successful STR. Thank you so much. You guys have a buyer? Not okay. yet. <laughs> <laughs> listing pitches and buyer needs. Who has an upcoming listing that's still off market or coming soon that they want to pitch right now? Anybody? Anybody? Nope. How about a buyer needs? Come on, guys. The market is not that bad. Come on. <laughs> the market is yes, fantastic. Tim, Tim has something. Yeah, if you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Two-bedroom, two-bath condo by Bluff Park, right across the street from the park. It overlooks the park. Uh, it's on 2nd Street, 2nd and Wanapero. Uh, two bedrooms, two baths for six eighty nine nine. Um, has uh, parking space. Um, has um, updated kitchen. Um, looks great. Um, low HOA dues, only three fifty five per month. Um, and then so that's twenty one hundred one East Second Street, number two hundred five in Long Beach. And then I have another listing um, over at uh, at Aqua. It's the it's the penthouse units, um, two stories, top floor, of course. Um, it's a one bedroom, but it has a loft slash bonus room that could easily be used as a second bedroom. And they're using it right now as a second bedroom. Uh, so it's a, technically, I guess we would call it two bedrooms, a one and a half bath, two story, listed for $799.9. Uh, it's definitely priced to sell. He had it listed before with another agent. They had offers at $830 and $840 before. So and it just fell out of escrow and he decided to relist it and list it with me. So um, in terms of two parking spaces, Another really great thing about it is uh, you got amazing views of the city, uh, but you also have an own, your own private garage with four walls, your own garage door and everything. So it really makes it a unique property. So that's at 488 East uh, Ocean, number P9 in Aqua. Thanks. Thank you so much, Tim. Any other buyer needs that somebody wants to add or a listing? Oh, go ahead, Bob, please. Go ahead. Buyer need um, Carson or um, Torrance area or Gardena. They're looking for three bedroom house um, there they could go up to 800 okay that's a good marketing technique you can guys use to get listings you know i have a buyer that's already buyer to do looking for this criteria if you want to sell your home Talk and most of you already know that they do a lot of business with carson on the l yeah. mm -hmm. uh -huh. anybody else okay now we're going to do a team Mastermind and Drake is going to take over here to tell you what's going to happen. I am. Yes. <laughs> you have your mic, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, do you want me to take that? Okay. You guys are the who is here for the last mastermind that we did in the office? You guys are here? It's a lot of fun. So, what we're going to do is we're going to break up into groups. As you can see, we've got um, paper here. Paper here and paper here. Uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We, have got, we got about 15 or so as people. So why don't we break into groups of about five? That way I think we can get some good energy going. And, and each one of you is gonna 
basically get a pen and head on over to one of the papers. And we are going to mastermind our ideas to improve the client experience from first contract to closing. Why is this important? Why is it important to really, really up our game for the client experience? I'm sorry, what? Possibly. Repeat business. How many people have attended my open house class before? Really? Maybe we should have another one. One of the first questions that I ask in a setting like this is, I am an unescorted buyer. Each one of you has an open house this weekend in the neighborhood that I want to buy. So my question to you is, what makes you different? Why would I pick you? And then I write a few of those bullet points on that list. So much what we're going to be doing right now. So that's the easy part. But then I go to the next person and I ask him the same question. Why should I pick you? What makes you different? And if he repeats one of her answers, well, then I put a little check mark there. And then I go to the third person, the fourth person, the fifth person. And you can see it's getting more and more increasingly difficult to identify yourself as being different and better than the rest. So that's what we're trying to do here is we're trying to mastermind ideas for you to up all of our games. Does that make sense? Everybody get it? Boy, we're really quiet today. <laughs> okay, so um, we've got pins here. So do you guys want me to count off or do you guys want to break into groups of, of five on your own? Okay, I'm going to do it. So this is going to be one. That's going to be two. That's going to be three. Are you ready? So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Are you playing? One, two, three. One, two, three, and one. <laughs> Dinos, don't make me hurt you. Okay, so everybody get up. That's one over here. Two is right there. Three is right there. Go to your perspective groups. What you want to do is you want to pick someone that's got nice, legible handwriting as your scribe, not someone that writes like a doctor. Yes. Here's one. Here's two. Here you go. And here's a pen for three. See you, Moneta. One is over there. Okay. Thank you for two and a half. Okay, so you guys, you guys, are you going to do the writing? Well, I love Rose before. I'm all cold cuts, but it's uh, so go ahead. Weeks, I'm past talk it. amongst yourselves, uh, and we want to hear your ideas on how to get that client experience from the very, very start okay. to the very, very ending. So maybe. Maybe you break the paper down to yeah. what are some great ways to start with <laughs> that can really, really in, you know, increase that bond all the way to closing. Okay, good, go. Yeah. So again, I would try to break it down. What are some great things in the beginning that you can do to increase that kind of experience? Put those for the top. What are some great things to do Maybe it's a month down the road, two months down the road, and you're not an escort yet with the buyer. Again, just, just trying to up the, the client experience. Yeah, take whatever you want. Who is the writer? Hey, I didn't have a group four. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> just stay there. There, there's so much trouble over there. Just stay over there. You need a pen? Let me get you. Okay. Do you understand what? Do you, do you understand the assignment? No. Okay. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create, think of creative ways to increase the client's experience. 
increase it? Yes. Okay. To just give them a higher quality experience. Okay. Like, you know, maybe it's um maybe when you're showing property, you have a um a, a really, really nice handy little packet for them to write notes on or something like that. That would be an elevated experience rather than just here's a nice house and, and they're not doing anything. Ideas like that to increase their experience because if they have a better experience in general the chances of you getting referrals from them increase you want to think oh my god she was absolutely amazing you have to work with my agent okay so that, that that's why we're masterminding okay it's it is uh, an opportunity a way to and if anybody on Zoom land has any ideas, feel free to chime in. Janet is for both. From, from the very beginning. If you meet them at an open house, so or you have them, have them. Meet them. Are they already our client? Have we already signed an agreement, or are they not? Yes. Well, you know, it it really could be anything. I like that, Leslie. Well, like you actually too. bring kids so to show like, homes? I always say no kids allowed. Yes, Holly, that's a great idea. Closing utilities list. Let's get those pens writing. Who's writing over here? Who's the doctor? Oh, okay. Thank you. We are going to do spell check. I made you laugh. Sorry. <laughs> I want to be a part of this group. So are you going to bring me coffee when I'm it looking is. at homes? That's fantastic. It is? It's an elevation, yes. Okay. And if not coffee, then water. Yeah. I totally say hey, Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. Good job. Yeah, but I'll say, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. It's like even if they don't drink coffee, it's something that yeah. you're yeah. 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 And and don't ask, just do it. Yeah. Perfect. Good job. Oh, I see Curb Hero again. <laughs> First time home buyer guide. Good job. And where are you going to get that from? KW Resources. KW Resources? <laughs> you, you mean Coastal, you mean coastal Hub? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Who, else, who else has those? First time home buyer guides? Yeah. Who has those? Like, are you asking? Title companies. Um, let me let me ask this gentleman right here. Do you happen to have a first time home buyer guide in your arsenal being title? Yes. Yes. Oh my God. How about asking title? Oh. There you go. I just said Problem that solved. Drake. I said that Drake, but you're ignoring me. Let's see what else is on our board. Oh, Leslie, my, my wife is our, my wife number two is already on personalized closing gifts. Yes, the closing gifts were uh, like Cutco. They were definitely present at my last um, uh, Career Compass. 
which is great because you can you can uh, spend a little bit more money and it's all write off because they are engraved with your information. Yes, Janet, water in the car. Uh oh, I missed the pet tag. Pet ID tags with the new address too. Oh, that's cute. Yes, we have. Um, I've seen some bringing your clients coffee while they're showing property. Good job, you guys. Introduce to your team. How many new agents do we have right here? You're still new. You're you're newer. You're newish. Okay. Hi. Do you, guys you speak as a team? Been good. When you when you meet people, or do you speak? I yeah. would would love to help you. Yeah, yeah. When you meet a new client. Yeah. Me and my team. Okay. It's. I it, figured it out. I, there's always a problem with speaking. the CDA. We would love to be your agent. You my see, when an agent has two escrows power. open, okay, so a CDA okay. is issued for both. So the split is determined in each one. If he closes one before the other, the split may vary if they cap. Good job, guys. I'm seeing a lot of nice so that's things why, up here. Yeah. So now, uh, that's why I always say it's not your fault, but it always messes up my numbers. I always wonder what the CD was. Getting smaller. So yeah, yeah. So it's now when I, I see it, I understand now what's going on. So I think Nasser might have been a doctor in another life because that writing is kind of small. When I go into it, it just tell me there's some been some changes, but I didn't pay attention to that until every time I come to you. Yeah. Would you like to say anything to our viewers on Hello, Zoom? Hello, viewers. Happy Tuesday. So happy to be here. Please. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I actually asked for Marcella since I was in charge here and you showed up. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, because I'm escrow officer, branch manager. <laughs> um, I'm in charge. I'm here to ask for all of your escrows. Okay. Okay. Gosh, so many busy, busy groups. I know. Yeah. We're going to take about five more minutes, guys. About five more minutes because we, we want to talk about these. So, yeah, five minutes. Get so, we're going to see the results. Going. Remember, how can you elevate the client experience from beginning to end? Over in this back group, I know you can't see the Zoomies, but um, we've got the the famous person that represents Naples. <laughs> Dinos is right here in the last group that decided that they wanted to be group number four, even though I didn't call for a group number four. But there's a paper here. Well, there's a paper there, too, so we could have oh. five. <laughs> <laughs> Post close. I like that, Hallie. That was cut on my class the other day. Post close. How do you keep? How do you keep that? Yes, Leslie. Oh, you do one month. Actually, you know what? I actually have implemented a one month house anniversary card. Um, I just started that this year, actually. Um, but otherwise, I do annually. Flowers and a card. You're such a girl. <laughs> Uh-oh, one new message. Am I in trouble, James? We'll see right now. <laughs> two and five years. Okay. 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 We got two minutes nice. left. Two minutes left, you guys. When I have them sit down, I I want to go back through this. If you can help me, yeah, yeah, go back yeah, there. Yeah, you got it. Okay. <clears throat> Two minutes. I have high expectations for group number four. <laughs> high, high <laughs> expectations. Yes. All right, you guys, let's wrap it up. You can see here the groups working hard. Look at that. And your last chore is to pick someone to speak for your team when, when we call you up. Sorry, sorry.
Thanks, guys. I'll take those pens back so Hallie doesn't get mad at me for not collecting the pens. I'll take that pen. Yes, it was not a going away gift. Okay, if I can have you guys all sit back down again, we're going to go over our findings. Thank you. Simonette, I'll take that. Thank you so much. Okay, you guys, now we're going to discuss discussion what we found. time, guys. Okay, who is going to be the speaker for group number one? Let's see here. I want to. Uh, how about that? No. James, how do I get the picture back on here? I, I want to make sure that, that the people on Zoom can see. Guys, can you see that? But I messed up the uh, the camera. Can you guys see the paper? Put it up just a little more, if possible. Can I do it manually? No. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick up right there. Beautiful. Okay. Team number one, who wants to speak? Oh my God, Judy! Thank you so much, <laughs> everybody. Let's give it up for Judy. Come on, hey, come on, Judy, Judy, Judy. Judy. <laughs> okay. So you guys, once again, we're talking about ways to increase the buyer experience from start to finish. So, what you got? We will meet with them, like at a coffee shop or if we're at the office, something very formal. Okay. Not just like on the phone, hey, I'm going to help you. So something formal, meet with them. Go on meeting with both parties or whoever's involved with the transaction. Um, then we'll have a consultation packet for them. And mm -hmm. this will have um, any of their information that we want to know about them and then they a little bio about us um our team introduce who we are um see what they expect of us we'll have a little gift package for them um everything will be personalized branded marketing with all of our information on it um we'll let them know that we have excellent like communication skills we will be touching base with them on a daily whether we have information for them or not we will let them know what's going on in the transaction okay pause did you guys hear that Communication. Whether Tree, can you update. please hold the mic? I am can holding the mic. Can you guys hold the mic closer to Judy? Oh, no, oh, closer sure. to Judy. We couldn't hear her at all. That's cool. We couldn't okay. hear her. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to repeat one thing that she said that, that was kind of important. She's communicating with the buyer whether there's an update or not. Okay. What happens is when, when there's a long, prolonged time of silence, people's minds tend to drift and wander like, uh oh, what's going on? Is there a problem? Silence, in this case, silence is not golden. Okay, so just communicate. Hey, you know, just touch your base. I don't have any new updates for you, but I'm just checking in. So that's that's important. That's still communicating. And you could ask them. Sometimes they don't want a phone call. I truly don't like talking on the phone. So it could be like, I could send you a text. I can send you an email. Just ask them what form of communication they prefer. Um, introduce your team. Let's say uh, Drake covered this earlier. He was saying, you know, even if you're just one person, you're not one person. You have a team of people. You have escrow. You have a title. You have a lender. So you always say you're a team. Don't yes. just say me individually. Everybody yeah. has Marcella back there. And Karina. Oh, oh, yeah. And Sarah. Sarah. And Sarah. Yeah, it's it's true. That's oh my God, Sarah, I could email her like one second and she's like, respond, Karina too. It's amazing. So you do, you have a team of people. Um, direct them to your reviews. You could talk about your reviews. If they have questions about what kind of business, um, pull up some of your reviews, have your information ready for how long you've been doing this. Um, if they want to even talk to some of your clients. Most of my business is past clients, referrals. So I don't really have to do that much. But if you're fairly new and you're grabbing people from open houses or whatever, yeah. Introduce yourself. They don't know who you are. Um, lender info. Okay, so now you. what if they're already qualified with a lender? Um, somebody was saying how good it would be to have them maybe have another lender information. Maybe another lender could offer them other ideas. Um, 
they don't have to be committed completely to their lender. What if another lender is offering them different programs? You don't want them to ever think that you're pushing them to a lender for a reason, because when that deal goes bad, they're going to go, oh, you gave me this lender. You have no affiliation with any lender. You're your own person. It's great to trust your lender once you do get used to them or whatever, but definitely refer other people. Um, quarterly pot buys. So when you're in the transaction, already closed escrow, we already jumped from closing escrow. It's okay. <laughs> um, quarterly pot buys, little gifts. I'm dropping off little gift cards to people right now because I'm out of business. So I have to go hit my past clients and I'm telling them, congratulations, your generational wealth. Guess what? You have this much equity now since you bought last. Don't forget to refer me to your people. I don't want particularly for them to sell. I want them to refer me to other people. Um, offer garage sale signs. This reminded me too. I need to get garage sale signs. It's a big hit. People love garage sale signs. Yep. Offer them all the time. Yep. And that's it. Yay for Judy. Thank you, ma'am. You did fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. You're actually hosting the meeting next week. I wasn't sure if you're aware of that or not. Nasser, since you're so close, take no, I, I I choose you. I choose you. Go ahead and take your paper if you could and put it right about here. There you go. And I'll give this to you. Let's yes, put sir. that right there. Just don't steal it. Okay, you're good. So first thing we talked about to find a common interest with the client. Then set up a social business event. Take him to lunch or coffee. So build rapport or wine. Yeah. Wine. Get him drunk. Get him drunk. <laughs> you know, I actually wine here. <laughs> I actually had a um um, a social media campaign going on for a, a while. It was called Coffee or Cocktails, You Choose. And and I was and I and I just booked coffee and cocktails all week. I prefer cocktails. Do you remember those? <laughs> Ask questions and listen. They believe listening is so important. To listen what they need, what they're looking for. How important is listening? <laughs> Do you guys know the difference between listening to respond versus listening to understand? Okay. There's a big difference. We can have a whole class on listening. So if you don't know the difference, come up to me later and we can explain it. But listening is huge. We're talking about this scenario that we need the prospects or clients at the open house mm -hmm. so give the client space let them feel the house don't follow them in every room so uh, casual conversation rather than more business type of you know conversations acknowledge their kids or pets kids and... <laughs> i hate kids sorry just kidding. He's not. So this is after a month. Invite them to a lunch meeting or in case if, you know, they haven't found a home they're looking for, to circle back with them as far as what they need and what we need to do to, uh, you know, met, meet their needs and maybe get a small gift for the kids. Okay. Pets. Yeah, I know that um, even sometimes when I'm doing open houses, um, I don't do it the best. I've seen it done so well. But I've seen some agents that actually bring little, they have little packets for kids that come to open houses with their parents. And if you can if you can win the kid, you're going to win the parent. So. so we love kids. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank you, Nasser. Appreciate that. <laughs> And group number three is going to be from Simonetta, only because I just love saying her name. Here she comes. I don't know anything else in Italian. Oh, 
explain it in Italian. Yeah, speak in <laughs> speak in Italian. And here, here, let me. I'm gonna pin you like like we're in um prom. There you go. <laughs> All right, number one, I brought coffee and or breakfast or something for them to feel comfortable. And actually, they were very, very um, help, um, great, um, grateful for it. Yeah. They weren't expecting it, so it was yeah. good. Awesome. Um, uh, we decided also explain the whole contract in details. Uh, some people are like, uh, I noticed they're really panicky. Why should I sign this? Or, you know, I'm like, I've noticed like, you know, I mean, I'm brand new. So I've noticed like, what is this? Why? So just explain, make sure you're available for them. The actual whole well, contract? Equal, the, no, the, the buyer, the, the buyer. The buyer broker. Buyer, yeah, okay, the buyer gotcha. broker. Um, it, it's kind of intimidating. It's it's going to take some practice on on all of our parts. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'll be the first to admit it. I'm not sure how that conversation is going to go with me just yet. I've I've only had it once. It went well. Did I stumble? Yes, I stumbled. Mm -hmm. So I know that there's improvement. So each time we're going to get better and better and better. What's a great way to handle that? Come to scripts and role play because I'm sure that they're covering that. Or just pick a partner and role play and get those stumbling blocks out of the way now with each other. So I don't, I don't know any better. So to me, it's all new. So it's, Correct. it's even, you know, it's, exactly. I don't know if it's harder or not. but It's just different. Exactly. That's all. It's okay. just different. Uh, preview properties before showing. I've noticed that some of the properties, especially condos, it's they're hard to, you know, where is the lock? Where is the unit? Where's, you know, it's hard to. So if you have a chance to, if I have the chance to preview some of the condos, some of the properties before I take I take the clients to, I feel more comfortable. Yeah. Just be comfortable. Uh, especially, with, I mean, there's some, and, and I'll be the first to admit, there are some complexes out there that are very, very not people friendly as far as navigating. Yes. Trish, right? Yes. Um, I, I was talking to Dinos earlier and he's got some clients who are looking in, in Marina Pacifica. Well, I remember not being able to find the right key for a while. Mm -hmm. Like, well, where, which key is it? I mean, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, so it's, it's really, yeah. It's so if, if you know ahead of a time that the complex that you're going to is an absolute maze because there's five, what's the one uh, on Bellflower? Oh, the, uh, on PCH? Stony Brook. Stony Brook. Oh, my God. Stony Brook. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to take half an hour to find the unit. Yeah. So do your homework. Yes. And then um, I said, uh, offer to offer them, to ask them if they want to drive together. I know it was, somebody said that uh, driving together, it was kind of stopped, stopped during COVID. But I guess it's like still. It really is about your and your client's comfort. Comfort of, yeah. Yeah. Um, just so ask. you're you're gonna yeah just ask yeah just ask just some people I mean I haven't had someone I haven't had someone in my car in I can almost not remember how long it's been exactly. it's been fabulous <laughs> yeah really really especially when they bring it's better yeah, not. kids I mean no yeah. it's just one person usually I mean I what I've noticed that if they're two they're rather drive together but if it's only one and one person driving okay. Um, that's my. But every now and then, see, Moneta, Jimmy. that there is a caravan of the family. So that involves three cars sometimes. I, I wish that on you soon. Uh, uh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Um, go, uh, go over all the pop, uh, the positive of each property. Just if, when you preview, I guess you can find yeah. all the positive, put them together. I have a question yeah. for you. Yeah. Is it your positive or is it their positive? No, it's positive. For them, what they're, you know, you listen to them, you know okay. what they're, what they're, what they want and what they're hoping to get. So okay. make sure you, you offer that, you, you underline that. And just... because you've been listening to them. Yes. Correct. Correct. Okay. So my next question for you is you put positive. Do you ever talk about the negative stuff about properties? Uh, we should, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Should. Yeah. Okay. Because I... once again, you know, if your client says, no, I've got to have two bathrooms because like, okay, great. Some people don't know the difference that, you know, how to count a full bathroom. Well, do you need a, a powder room just for a toilet or do you need a second place to shower? So maybe they, they said, no, I've got to have two places to shower, but you're showing some place that only has one and a half hours. Like, well, don't forget, you mentioned that you needed a second place to shower. 
this place only has a powder room. So once again, that proves to them that you're listening to them. Okay? The easy to do too is just say, rate this couch between one and 10. And then ah. they'll tell you six. And you're like, why a six? And then they'll tell you. Exactly. Oh, perfect. That's great. That's, That's fantastic. Good. That's great. Yeah. Judy Pierce, everybody. Judy Pierce? Yeah. You really don't want me to talk it's, to you. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh, and just be knowledgeable of the area, uh, about the shops, the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, very important, I think. And um, after show him, you can take it to lunch and see what they think about each property if you want to take him to lunch or you break. are going to be my agent because I want you to take him to lunch. No, I'm just, you're not you're yeah. Just lunch. yeah, I mean, take him to lunch or a little snack, whatever. Sit down. I'm just saying, it's, debrief. It's, yeah, debrief and, and ask him what they thought about the, each property. Yeah. Or, of no, course, you fantastic. can send him home and say, hey, text me later. But I think. No, Perfect. I don't yeah. Uh, and uh, I said, and also give him a closing gift. Just in okay. case and then uh, one year anniversary of the closing, send them like you were saying, like just send yep. them some. Uh, I send a card every year. One year, you know, in your yep. home or whatever. That's awesome. Yeah. Good nice job. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll take that mic. Yep. Thank you so much. Everybody, see you, Moneta. Okay, Bronson, come on up. This is the troubled team number four. Troubled team number four. <laughs> they went rogue. We have high expectations. <laughs> I kept it really simple. These are things you can implement today. There you go. Uh, we'll start off with the first contact. We think deliverables, but deliverables that they will keep maybe first couple months at least. So something like a first time home buyer's guide. And uh, something that came to realization for me was Doug probably drops off about three to five pens what? to me no all the way. time. I don't think I've thrown away a single one. To a title company has resources. <laughs> <laughs> also, oh. first time homebuyer guides. So that's something you reach out to them for. Uh, I'm going to include oh, I have pens. A follow -up. I have a yeah. follow up on, on first time homebuyer guides. Super, super important, guys. And you probably have the right intention, but there's one way to make it even better. Never, ever, ever hand something to a buyer like this fantastic first time home buyer guide to them without watching. Well, I'm not even gonna give you the answer. What happens if you just give that to them and they walk out the door, but you didn't get their contact information? Are they ever gonna be able to get back to you? No. So when you've got great material like that, I implore you to you know what, just go on to on the Word document and make some return address labels with your contact information on there. And everything needs to have your contact information. So I've got a stack of first time home buyer guys at home in my closet and they all have my sticker on the back. So that way, when they're looking at it, maybe a month later, three months later, they know how to get back to me and not just the title company. Okay, super important on everything you hand out. Thank you, Drake. Um, another first contact thing is Curb Hero. For those of those that used it, I haven't. Uh, Dino's brought it up to me, but uh, you can sign in on Curb Hero for an open house, and it'll automatically send them information about the listing, something that they can refer back to later. And does it have your information on there as well? It's branded to you, so they, they get the information, but then you also get their contact information, right? Yeah. So it's kind of a win-win. A um, Herb Hero. Herb Hero. And then for follow up, we think doing a thank you note right after that initial contact, whether it's from an open house, cold calling, or anything, we think it's important you send a thank you note and touch up on that. Um, and I think digital organization is so important. So when you send an appointment, you're sending a calendar invite with kind of details of the breakdown of what the appointment's going to pertain. That's fancy. Um, that sounds like my Cardi to me. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and then updates as well, right? And then in escrow, it's super important you have a, a high value TC who's always in communications. When you're out on the field doing your thing, they're able to send documents and be up to date. Uh, that comes with the transaction timeline, ensuring that you know they know every single uh, step of the process, what day their contingency days are up. We think I think that's super important. I'm gonna pause you right there. Transaction update. You guys, this is super, super important. 
think of yourselves as like a nice server in a nice restaurant, okay? The server knows what you've ordered. So the server should be able to anticipate what you're going to need for that meal or transaction. Should you ever have to ask, should you ever have to ask for a ketchup or a steak knife or, or, or whatever? They're anticipating your needs, okay? So what I try to do in my transactions is I always try to let my clients know what the next two or three steps is going to be. Because I really, if they ever ask me, oh, okay, what's next? Then I'm, you know, I, oh, you know, I, I do the face plant because I'm thinking, oh, I, I meant to address that. I don't ever want them to feel like, gosh, I, I, I don't know where we are in the, in the transaction. So if you can just get in the habit of a future pace in the next two or three steps, I wouldn't go too far because they're going to forget. It's, it's going to give them a lot more comfort. Um, I think having a list of vendors is really important. A list of vendors that's local to the area, whatever you're selling in. Uh, I get, you know, that question a lot. Hey, do you have a, a plumber, a cabinet guy? And I think if you can have those resources, it just shows that you work in the area, you know the area, mm -hmm. and you're well connected. And then closing gifts, something that will actually have your name on it and maybe they'll keep for a while. Something that, you know, maybe not champagne bottles is cool, but something that they can keep and see it throughout yeah. their time okay. in the house. All right, and that's what we got. All right, thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. Was that helpful? Awesome. Here you go. We're gonna. Oh yeah. Well, Leslie's an overachiever. Please hold. For some reason, it's frozen a little bit. I bet. Thank you, Okay. All right, guys. First of all, thank you, Drake, so much. It was a very helpful conversation that we had, and we, I'm sure, each one of us learned something new from all the nice ideas that was presented by every group. So great job, guys. So sometimes I get asked the question. Is Drake Cruz the twin brother of Tom Cruise? So I answer and say, no, they just look alike. Okay. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, yes. Yeah. Okay, for the MCA moment today, uh, today is a very special day, August 13th. Does anybody know why? Well, they're simply because in all listing agreements and lease listing agreements are not allowed to show any more a compensation for the buyer broker. Look at how excited you are. Look at your faces right now. That's, oh my God. Not excited, huh? Well, uh, but of course, we found a way around this and there was an email sent. There's an office addendum. Uh, two addendums actually that would have the concession or the compensation that would be given for the buyer's broker that which you would make your seller or landlord sign when you're doing the listing agreement so and that email was sent by simon so be sure to have that addendum when you're signing a listing agreement whether with a residential listing agreement or a lease listing agreement and uh, let your tcs be aware of that as well okay so that's just uh, the mca moment for today and now we're going to have uh, Sarah from Pacific Coastline Escrow. And I want to say something about Sarah because I deal with a lot of escrow companies, whether when I'm representing the seller or especially here when I'm dealing with all these escrow companies who send over your checks. I see a lot of escrow companies make mistakes, but Sarah and her team never made a mistake. So it's very important. Yeah. So it's very important to work with someone who doesn't make mistakes because she will be your image, you know? So... When you work with Sarah, you don't have to worry about a thing because she won't make her mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, um, just to kind of reiterate, I'm actually going to jump on a, an escrow seminar here in the next 30 minutes on commissions as well, like in the escrow industry, just to see what everyone's going to be doing. We're trying to make everything kind of the same across the board when it comes to what we need for commission documents. I notice right now a lot of people opening escrow are getting in good habits of sending us their commission agreements. Um, 
make sure to read the form. I have one agent who sent it to me and I went through to read it and he had this box marked. I don't know if he knew he marked it or not, but it said that this agreement excludes single family residences. So I was like, does this need to be amended or revised or is this not a party to this transaction because it excludes this house that's in escrow? Yeah. And he was like, thanks for catching that, I'll fix it. So just, I would recommend making sure when you open escrow, give your escrow officer what the commission instructions are for you at least, because usually the listing agent gives us both sides. But if you're representing the buyer and you have an agreement, you know what you're supposed to have. Like this agent that I had mentioned was getting 2.5, but he was only getting two, 2.5. Like there's another 0.25 that the buyer has to pay. So just make sure that we get it, and especially up front, because that's one of the first things escrow has to do with the buyer's lender is disclose fees. So if we're going to say that the buyer's paying a couple thousand in commission, we want to make sure the lender knows that up front so they don't have to redisclose, right, and have all that squared away in the beginning. Um, so just things to think about when it comes to the commission changes, uh, making sure you read through your forms. I am telling you people miss boxes getting marked all the time, or I just opened an escrow but didn't know there was solar on it. <laughs> so things like that come up all the time, trying to like keep you guys, you know, that on the forefront of everything in the beginning of the transaction so we know what our time frame is to the end. So please reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm a resource for you. Even if it's not my transaction, I'm happy to help with anything you guys need. So thank you. Thank you. Yay. Thank you, Sarah. Now we have Doug Thompson from Title. And every okay. and every time I see Doug, he passes by. He always drops something off as a as a gift for all of us. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I'll be taking taking over Doug's position for today. Okay. Um, thank you for having me. Of course. I just wanted to take a few moments to uh, mention about the NetSheet app that, we, that we're offering. Uh, if you guys are using it, that's great. But if you're not using it, you can just scan that barcode right here. There's one for an Apple, the other one's for Android. And um, there's also a referral code here at the bottom. Uh, this is going to be really useful, especially right now, Sorry. especially right now with all the changes that's happening with the compensation and concession and all that stuff. Everything's been updated through this uh, NetSheet app. You're able, especially if you're doing um, if you're doing an open house and you're, you know, you can share the closing costs right there on the spot with that potential buyer. Uh, so it will come in handy. It creates a PDF file for you and then you can just share it with them right there and then you can collect their uh, you know, contact information. Um, the next page here just talks about where we are offering 25% discount for seniors and military as well, and then 30% for investors. And then the next page here just talks about more about the NetSheet app as well. Um, it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. I'm happy to do a quick demo with that. If you guys like, so let me know. I'm happy to help with that. Um, but you could just, yeah, if you do the sellers to NetSheet, um, you could list the, you know, the broker commission and it gives you the total cost right there at the bottom, or you could put the, uh, the concession seller amount. And then same thing for the seller to net. If the, if the seller is like, I need $500,000, that's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping to net. You can just plug in that $500,000 there. And then you will also note the current balance on the house. And then at the bottom, you will uh, also note the seller paid closing cost or the concession. And then it will give you the exact total amount. Um, same thing applies for the buyer as well. Um, you would start with the city, and then you uh, you would also note you know the the amount of the house that's being sold for, and it gives you the total breakdown of the closing costs for everything. So, yeah, if you guys have any questions, please uh, feel free to let me know. I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. How come nobody asked me today, where is Manny, where is Hallie, where is Dougie? Does anybody even wonder what happened to them? Yeah. Don't you guys miss them? I already miss them. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're, take a guess. Mega camp, exactly. Okay. Now we have Lena King from... Okay. Are you on the call, Lena? Guess not. Now we're going to have uh, a lender update from Mike Hardy, who I really enjoy his presentation about talking about the mechanics of the loan market. <laughs> Thanks, 
and tell us how the interest rates are going. Are they still going down? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so here's the thing. Last week was a very interesting week for interest rates because we had interest rates the lowest they had been in well over a year, but we also saw the fastest increase climb in nearly two years within the same week. So it was a very volatile week last week. This is something that we're just going to see as the economy is cooling and the job market is trying to figure things out and interest rates in the Fed are trying to figure things out too. So everything's gonna be jumping around for a little bit. We're gonna have some volatility, but luckily the volatility was on our side this week uh, so far because today, well, let me uh, tell you, there's two different types of inflation uh, reports, right? There's PPI and there's CPI. The producer's price index is what it costs producers to manufacture something. And the consumer price index or the CPI is what people pay for it. Well, today we had a report came out that was PPI showing that for producers of goods has come down considerably, like a really decent amount today. Now, tomorrow is CPI, the consumer price index. So we're all really, really hoping that today's report is giving us a bit of an indication about tomorrow's. So it looks good. Hopefully we'll continue to just see these interest rates come down. But until then, there's going to be a lot of volatility. So just uh, strap in and have fun. Yeah, thank you so much. How many of you think that the Federal Reserve alone determined the interest rates for our mortgage rates? Mike, I'm going to need you here. Oh, yeah. Huh? How many of you think? How many of you think that? Federal Reserve determines is the sole determinant of the interest. Yeah, we're right. No, we're no right, Alex. Or raise their hand because yeah. you're absolutely correct. The Fed does not set, uh, set the interest rates. Exactly. It, that's a completely different interest rate. The Fed funds rate is for a period of 24 hours. We deal with mortgages that are a period of 30 years is a much different type of interest rate. They are indirectly related through the economy. But remember, when these things shift, mortgage interest rates will move so, so, so much faster than the Fed can even try to do. So keep in touch with your local experts uh, like lenders who like to pay attention to this stuff. Yeah, thanks. thanks Thank you so much, Mike. Thank <laughs> yeah, you so much. I like getting him to talk about these mechanics, how loans work. It's important talking points when you're talking with your buyers to talk about what's going to happen in the interest rates and the mechanics. It's not just you're going to say, the interest rates are going to go down. you got to tell them what is it based on? How does the mechanics work? When you just have that smart, you know, intelligent conversation with him, he's going to think that's a good realtor. You, know? you don't have to tell him the details of everything, but you just give him that uh, snapshot, you know? Okay, training and events. Uh, just to uh, know that August 15, all your KW websites are going to be updated, guys. So it's not going to be the same. If you have any custom you know, pictures or photos in your website or any uh, reviews, all this is going to go away and you're going to have to do it again once more. So just be prepared. August 15, all the KW websites are going to be updated. It's going to become standard again. Then you just have to customize it as you want to do it. And the Millionaire Real Estate Agent Playbook has been released. If you want to order a copy, just scan the QR code here. Uh, that will be an interesting book. How many of you, by the way, read the Millionaire Real Estate uh, Agent book, not the playbook? How many of you? Very good. Very smart that you read it. It's very important. We always, when I teach in Ignite, it's very important because a lot of things in Ignite is based on uh, the Millionaire Real Estate book. Contract classes with Simon every Friday at 10.30 a.m. We miss him today, too. He's also in the mega camp. He couldn't be here, but whenever Simon gives a class, I advise you to always attend because everything we do here is based on you know legality. If you do something wrong, you can easily be sued. I know we're protected by the real estate risk management, but there is no need to go to that level. If you can do things right from the start, you could avoid any lawsuit in the future. So when you understand how the contracts work, you would do everything correctly. So always attend whenever Simon has a class for that. Uh, the best open house strategy we'll ever see by Richard Chung is on Wednesday, on August 21st at 12 p.m. Richard is not with us today, right? I think he's in Mega Camp as well. 
command classes with Dougie. It's always important to listen, to attend uh, Dougie's command classes because, you know, when you see how you can uh, navigate through command, it will really save you a lot of things. Like for example, the smart plans, you can send an email campaign without having to go through all that effort of prospecting and sending that. So there's a lot of things you can do in command. Like you have your own database in command. Did you all know that? You have your own database that's offered already in the fees we pay every month in the tech fee. So I always recommend that you attend the command classes with Doug. And there is a KWCP Dodger night, Wednesday, August 21st at 7 p.m. If you want to register, scan the QR codes. You know, I'm looking forward when the World Cup comes here that we have some kinds of things like that. I will be interested in going <laughs> when it comes in the U.S. in two years. I'll be there for sure. Or if Messi comes and plays in California, I want to see that. Uh, book club, KW Book Club Creativity. Uh, that's Thursday, August 29th from 5 to 6 p.m. And we imagine Expo happening in September 25th and 26th. I know at that point I'm going to be in Sacramento, sending train the trainer. Uh, we imagine is heading to Long Beach. So if you ever want to go there. And script and roll play opportunities with Richard and Stefan in person. This is very helpful because the more you script practice, the more you role play, you internalize the scripts. And you know, Stefan has been in the business for a long time. When you sit with Stefan and you hear him, you know, coach you through the scripts or do the script with you, you're going to learn a lot. So it will come natural to you when you, when you meet a, uh, a client casually, you'll find yourself being able to speak and handle objections. So believe me, when you spend time with Stefan, you're going to learn a lot of things. And Richard. Any questions about today's meeting or about anything in the office in general? Well, I hope uh, you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day, guys. Great job, everyone. Wonderful team meeting.